Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> so nice to see all of you here. And I want to thank all of you so much for being here today for this significant Schlotfeld lecture held in honor of our FPB Dean Emerita, Roselle May Schlotfeld. Roselle was, we often called her the fearless leader and a tireless champion. And so I would like to introduce to you our special guest speaker, who is also a fearless leader and tireless champion. And she's here today especially, um, and it's important that we greet her as, as our uh, guest speaker. Dr. Linda Burns Bolton is Vice President and Chief Nursing Officer at Cedars sinai Hospital Health System and the Research Institute in Los Angeles, California. She is currently serving as one of the trustees of our Case Western Reserve University. And over the last 20 years, Dr. Burns Bolton has played a vital leadership role in raising issues of diversification in nursing education and practice. She serves as a member on various healthcare advisory boards, is a past president of the National Black Nurses Association, and is a member of the California Strategic Planning for Nursing uh, Committee on Diversity. Uh, she's, on the, she's a member of the Institute for Nursing and Healthcare and the National Advisory Council on Nursing Education and Practice. She also advised on the formation of the Asian American Pacific Islander Nurses Association and is on the editorial board of the Journal of the National Hispanic Nurses Association. While at Cedar sinai Dr. Burns Bolton, her division was designated as a magnet nursing service by the American Nurses Credentialing Center, the highest award given to hospitals by the nursing profession. Dr. Burns Bolton was the first uh, African American to graduate from Arizona State School of Nursing, and she is a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing, and she was president of the uh, American Academy of Nursing. In her recent role as vice chair of the Initiative on the Future of Nursing, which is a joint effort of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and Institute of Medicine, she is helping to effect change for nursing on a national level. The initiative, chaired by Do uh, Donna Shalala, was a two-year effort resulting in the 2009 Institute of Medicine's report, The Future of Nursing, Beating Change. And she's here today to talk to us about it, and we are very, very thrilled to have her. So without further ado, please help me welcome Dr. Linda Burke. Good afternoon. Oh, the fact that you're here on a Saturday afternoon and it's beautiful outside, uh, you are very party people. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, May, for that very generous uh, introduction. Uh, this is the fourth time that I've spoken at Case School of Nursing. The first time that I spoke here, uh, I was at that time president of the, of the National Black Nurses Association. Uh, and so I feel like Case is my second home. Uh, May was, you know, can be very, she gets her mind set on something. You, you know, watch out, she's coming, she's coming to you and you gotta do it. So uh, I'm not from Ohio, I'm actually from Arizona. And uh, grew up in Arizona, and my uh, first degree was from Arizona State University, and then I've been in California for the last 40 years. and and. May and Congressman Stokes were the individuals who talked me into even considering <laughs> uh, becoming a trustee at Case. And I, I've enjoyed it very much. But uh, you have a wonderful uh, person in, in May, and she's going to do a, a great job now that she's stepping down, has stepped down from the deanship. I also know May over care. You have a fabulous uh, new dean coming into the to the to the school who will be able to assist you. So I, I this place makes me feel warm and at home 
And what I'm going to do today is share with you um, the last two years of my life in terms of the initiative on the future of nursing. Uh, just by a little bit of background, why did the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, which is the largest health professional uh, foundation in, in the world, why did they support this work? Uh, the, the foundation uh, has this, this mission uh, to improve the health of Americans and the health care system. And to do that, they believe that it is, is essential that they invest in human capital. Uh, we all know that the greatest resource that any organization has is, 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 is the humans that are in that organization. And so the, the, you take the largest uh, profession, uh, which is nursing, as health professionals, 3.1 million, and they looked at what was happening with that large segment. They, as a group, we as a group, were not as educated, were not as involved in leadership roles, were not engaged in interprofessional work, and we really needed to have a blueprint of if we could transform nursing, would that result in improving uh, the health of our nation? So that's why they went into this very unique uh, role of supporting the study at the Institute of Medicine. Why the study at the Institute of Medicine? Well, because the Institute of Medicine, uh, as you know, is, is the scientific organization for our country, uh, originally developed by Congress, and now it's an independent uh, uh, organization, but originally developed by the United States Congress to bring to Congress's attention and to inform Congress about issues, societal issues, that needed to be addressed. And, and both in terms of the National Academy of Science uh, work, as well as things like, you know, uh, how much soybean should we, we plant? Uh, so they don't just do things in health professions, they do uh, many other types of, of, of studies. The rigor of the Institute of Medicine uh, is what the Robert Johnson Foundation wanted. You do not have a study released from the Institute of Medicine without solid evidence. And so the recommendations have to be, uh, you must have a significant amount of evidence that stands up to peer review uh, to, before a study can be released. And so they wanted to make sure, try to, to make sure that we use that body, the IOM, with its prestige and with its methodology for conducting studies uh, to be able to answer the question, what if we transform nursing? What's the potential for uh, actually being able to uh, achieve a healthier nation? So this afternoon, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the recommendations, focus on the action campaign, uh, and that's what has happened. We released the report on October of 2010. And uh, so I'm going to tell you what's been happening since that time. And then identify some opportunities for you. I'm hoping that you'll agree this is a great uh, school of nursing and a great university. But it's important that you, each and every one of you say, I'm willing to lead. So change doesn't happen just because someone releases a, a study. Change happens because uh, humans get behind it and, and, and support it. And I certainly hope you will be inspired to support the work here in the state of Ohio. We envisioned a, a healthcare system that was changed from its current makeup, where the, the most of the dollars in, in the United States health dollars are really uh, focused at care at the end of life and are focused on uh, care within systems like hospitals or long term care facilities. And then we would intentionally change the, the work of healthcare delivery so there was more focus on promoting health disease prevention, wellness, and reliably and, and delivering health care. So uh, trying to get rid of the waste and the, uh, the you know, uh, the fix-it shops that keep having you come back. We also believe that it's essential that we have more interprofessional collaboration. Healthcare is a team sport, okay? It's every member of the team, including those who would benefit from those who are delivering care. So they're not seeing the, the uh, uh, consumers of healthcare services as outside of the team. They're actually part of the team. It's actually essential that they be part of the team. We wanted to, uh, and tried to get this to the medicine, uh, to say that we wanted person-centered care. They wouldn't go that far. Uh, they, they, so we wound up with patient-centered care. The reason we were trying to uh, focus the issue on person-centered is that you're not always in a role of a patient, are you? 
but, but you do want to be, you know, have good health, and nurses can help you in, in, in terms of doing that. And then lastly, you know, we want to slow the rate of growth. Uh, we have you know, try to bend that cost curve just a little bit so we can uh, have more dollars available to, to actually support disease prevention and, and wellness uh, and health promotion. Now, the, in that study, and this group of individuals who were involved in this work were made, came from all kinds of different backgrounds, including consumers. We had consumers on as, as the members of the study committee. Uh, and there were only four nurses on, and we took a lot of uh, grief from the nursing <laughs> profession. We were glad that, you know, we should be all nurses. Well, that doesn't work that way. Uh, you know, this was a scientific study, and it was about, you know, uh, having uh, all the individuals who could have something to reflect upon it as they looked at the evidence and made recommendations come from their perspective. It's the whole notion of, of some of you have heard me call, uh, say this often about this notion of calling the circle, of calling diverse voices in. It's when you have diverse voices at the table that you get better solutions. Mm -hmm. If you have a voice that only the same person has the same ideology and, and, and doesn't, you know, no one thinks differently, you're not going to get the best solutions. So calling the circle, we're always bringing together diverse voices to be able to, to look at how you might uh, address a problem. So we envision that because nurses are at the front lines all across the settings, and because primarily we are, we, well, for the most part, we are very focused on the human being. We understand the work that we do is about human caring. Nursing, yes, you learn about human caring, but the work that we do is about caring for humans. And so we, we understand the importance of being compassionate in that, the importance of trying to promote their own ability to be able to care for themselves. And we thought that we, because nurses do exist across the continuum of care services, we wish they exist in more of continuum of care services. 65% of the America's nursing workforce is in acute care hospitals. We actually think that needs to be flipped uh, if we're going to be successful in improving the health of the nation. Uh, we're not saying hospitals are going to close, so the students in the, in the room don't worry. You'll have, you'll have a job, but you might, that job might not be in acute care. That job might be in long-term care. That job might be in school health, community health. Uh, everywhere where there's a need to promote human care. So now to the recommendations. The first recommendation is one that has had um, a, a significant amount of uh, media attention. Uh, we've done over uh, 600 different television interviews, and I've been on the radio more times than I'd, I'd like to be. I, I ran a, a health show for nine years on a, on, a, on a radio station, so I'm very familiar with that. That wasn't the issue. It's just that some of the questions that come in, you want to say, really? Do you really, do you really need to ask that question? Uh, but that's okay. Uh, so the, the, this is the one, scope of practice barriers. We believe that nurses, no matter what their roles, so although this was assumed that we were only talking about advanced practice nurses, that was not true. All nurses should be able to practice in accordance with their education. And that is essential. And so we found that that's not true throughout the United States. Only 14 states allow nurses to truly practice in accordance with their education whether that is at a baccalaureate degree level, a master's degree level, or a doctorate level. And the other part about Institute of Medicine studies is you, all, you must always identify an actor. If you make a recommendation, then you have to say who should do what. So in this recommendation of removing scope of practice barriers, we had recommendations for Congress, state legislatures, the Center for Medicare Services, Office of Personnel Management, so you know, where all the congressional uh, staffers and the United States congressmen and senators can receive their health care. We think everyone should be able to, to have that, that same level. And they do have nurse practitioners that uh, the Office of Personnel Management pay for. So why should that happen across the United States? 